The new edition of Kill Team has just been released, and it takes place in an incredibly cool new setting, the Gallo Dark. The Gallo Dark is a space hulk, a giant mass of ancient derelict spaceships and asteroids and other debris floating through space. It's kind of like those giant garbage islands in the Earth's oceans, except in space, and it's made up of thousands of priceless ships lost in the void, from not only mankind's past, but from hundreds of alien races as well. Space Hulks have been one of the coolest settings in the Warhammer world for a long time, dating back to 1989 when a board game of the same name was released. This iconic game had one player controlling Space Marine Terminators who were investigating the Space Hulk, while the other player controlled Gene Stealers, predatory aliens who had inhabited the dark corridors of the derelict ship. The game pretty clearly took some heavy inspiration from the Alien franchise, but players had to use their imagination to transform the cardboard tiles that the game came with into the cramped industrial corridors from the movies. Nonetheless, the game was a fan favorite, and it's had several new additions and re-releases over the years. Fast forward to today, and the new Into the Dark set provides what fans have been wanting for ages, a plastic kit that allows you to build your very own Space Hulk at home. And wouldn't you know it, Games Workshop has asked me if I can build a custom Kill Team table to showcase the potential of this set and setting, and of course I accept it. So today, we're going deep into the Gallo Dark. So as part of the secret project, I got advanced access to the new Into the Dark box set, and of course it's jam-packed with extremely detailed terrain to make the corridors of the Gallo Dark. It comes with a nice thick cardboard battlefield that folds out as well, showing a battered industrial floor on sort of a grid pattern, which gives the feel of the bulkheads and corridors inside a giant ship. Now the terrain pieces themselves are composed of walls, columns, doors, and bits of scattered terrain like dynamos, fallen pipes, and industrial looking tanks and consoles. Everything locks together with quite a clever push fit system, meaning you can set it up in tons of interesting layouts pretty quickly out of the box without having to commit to anything or glue anything down, which is good for the indecisive among us. It's also quite easy to disassemble for storage and transport. Now the box includes two rulebooks, core rulebook and a specific Into the Dark rulebook, which contains some special rules for fighting in close quarters, some scenarios, and some example layouts. It also includes some backstory about Space Hulks and the Gallo Dark. Listen to this. According to this, the Gallo Dark is the size of a moon. That's no moon. It's a space station. Inside the rulebook, you also learn about the two kill teams that the box comes with, who have come to the Gallo Dark seeking the vast wealth of salvageable resources and ancient technological knowledge that a giant mass of space shipwrecks contains. And these teams are the Crute and the Imperial Navy Breachers. Now, neither of these are exactly the poster childs for Warhammer 40k, so who are they? Well, the Crute are a race of ferocious hunters that evolve new attributes from their opponents by eating the flesh of their dead. They're kind of like Kirby if Kirby was a bird dinosaur type fella that looked vaguely like the Predator. Anyways, they're cool looking hunter tracker type guys, and I never had much interest in them before, but I really enjoyed learning about them and painting them up. The new models are really nicely done, and they come with some great poses. Super dynamic action poses are cool and all, but I personally have a soft spot for poses that a model could conceivably be posed in every turn of the game. Like this sniper, for example. He's aiming. And it looks great. Simple. I love it. We'll see more of these guys later. Now the other kill team that comes in the box are the Imperial Navy Breachers. How do I explain these guys? It's like you know how in the real world the Navy has Marines who are specialized in ship-to-ship -ship combat and boarding actions? Um, it's like that except in space. N but not to be confused with Space Marines. Okay, hang on. So before we go any further, I think we need to talk a little bit about how space travel works in the 40k universe. The way mankind travels the vast distances between the star systems in the 41st millennium is with something called warp travel, and understanding it is really important to understanding the setting as a whole. In the Warhammer universe, there exists a parallel dimension behind reality, a dimension composed entirely of psychic energy that exists as an echo of all the emotions and the beings that exist in our material universe, so-called real space. This dark parallel dimension is known as many names. The Immaterium, the Empyrean, the Great Ocean, the Aether, the Sea of Souls, but most commonly, the Warp. The mind of every sentient being in the material universe leaves an imprint in the Warp that could be described as their soul. Thus, strong emotions like anger, pain, and pleasure when experienced by enough mortals can manifest as seething storms of psychic energy or even physical beings inside the Warp. It's a realm of chaos, where physical laws of space and time do not apply. 
and like any ocean in the Sea of Souls lurk sentient predators, unfathomably ancient evil beings that are most simply described as demons. So, what's the point? Well, back in the 19th millennium, some clever fellow realized that by taking a shortcut through the warp, where physics and time do not exist like they do in real space, you could travel to distant stars far faster than the speed of light. This is warp travel. And what can go wrong? You're just taking a spaceship through hell, basically, right? Well, it turns out quite a lot can go wrong, and countless ships have been lost in the tides of the warp as the crew goes mad, or warp monsters materialize on board, or the psychic energies twist and fuse the ship into something unrecognizable as demons feast on the souls of the mortal crews. It's pretty bad stuff. So with the capability of warp travel, mankind spread itself across the stars, building an extensive network of conquest and resource extraction, and with it, vast fleets of starships known as the Imperial Navy. Now up until the Into the Dark box came out, there have been very few Imperial Navy models on the table, despite how prominent and important they are in the lore of the Warhammer universe. This guy's one, an Imperial Navy officer. Many of the highest ranks in the Imperial Navy come with the title Lord. Lord Captain, Lord High Admiral, titles that reflect that the officer class is usually recruited from the Imperial nobility. Now luckily, in today's day and age, if you wanted to style yourself a lord or lady, there's an easier way than commanding a fleet of starships. There's a little known Scottish custom of calling landowners lords and ladies, so if you were to own a piece of land in Scotland, and that's actually easier than you might think, because today's sponsor, established titles, will sell you a small plot of land in Scotland, effectively making you a lord or a lady. They'll send you this cool certificate that says proclamation and has a unique plot number on it so you can see exactly where your piece of land is and you could change your name on your plane tickets and stuff like that so when they call out your name because you're about to miss your flight they have to call you lord it makes a great last minute gift and they work with charities one tree planted and trees for the future to ensure that a tree is planted for every plot that's purchased so you can feel good about supporting them as well because you're helping reforestation efforts around the world Go to establishedtitles.com slash Eric's Hobby Workshop and get your gifts now to support the channel. They're having a big sale and if you use the link in my description and the promo code Eric's Hobby Workshop, you'll get an additional 10% off. I'm told also that the next 200 people who purchase a plot through that link will get a plot close to mine, so we can make a little Eric's Hobby Workshop kingdom over there. So check it out guys, it's a fun gift idea and I think you guys will really enjoy it. Thanks Established Titles for sponsoring, now let's get back to the 41st millennium. So as I was saying, with the new Kill Team box, you can command a squad of Imperial Navy Breachers, a specialized crew of Navy personnel who excel at boarding and breaching vessels. The designs are actually based on an old sketch by Jess Goodwin done ages ago. How long ago? Well, the sketch itself is dated, but the picture I found is pretty hard to read. I think it either says 1509 or 1989, so either 500 years ago or about 33 years ago. Anyways, it's old. But the concept of the Imperial Navy was kind of shelved for a long time in the intervening period until about 1999. And in 1999, Games Workshop came out with a game called Battlefleet Gothic, which allowed players to control fleets of Imperial spaceships in interstellar ship-on-ship -ship warfare. The game had a cult following, but it's now long out of print. Still, it was cool to be able to control Imperial starships, which are of a vast size. So when I say the Imperial Navy is huge, I mean huge, like shockingly huge. Like, the models that are only a few inches long in the Battlefleet Gothic game are kilometers long in real life. The scale is insane. Far too large to ever appear at 40k kill team scale on the table, right? So that was all a very long-winded way of saying I want my kill team table to have some of the claustrophobic feel of the ship's interior, but also some of the grandeur and epic scale and size of the setting. And what better way to do that than to have one of the walls of the table be the exterior of the ship. So here's my plan. One of the short walls of the table, I'm gonna have a long hallway-like room with windows looking out into space. I'm also gonna make a little room that opens up into space. Something like a small docking bay or maybe even just an access port reaching the outside for jettisoning waste into the freezing void. This will be a plausible entry point for one of the kill teams. Deploying in this little room will be like they just breached the ship and they're staging their party to delve deeper. Now back in the early days of the channel, I made this. A display stand that attempts to capture the feeling of standing inside one of these massive Imperial ships and looking out at space beyond. Now being the dogmatic and impractical place that the Imperium is, the design of the ship's interiors are often described as gothic, cathedral-like structures, full of arched windows and vaulted ceilings. Now I wanted some of the same feeling for my Kill Team board as well. I wanted you to be able to look across the table and see the starry depths of space outside through these massive windows. So let's start by making a night sky. I start with a piece of black Bristol board, 
and give it a bunch of stabs with a compass. This being the math tool compass, not the find north compass, obviously. I, I don't think I need to say that, but you know, I just did, so I guess I could edit this out, but no, I, I guess I didn't edit it out if you're hearing it. Anyways, when you put this in front of a light, it should read as a night sky full of stars. Hell yeah. I think we can take this concept to another level though. If you've watched my videos before, you may know that I'm a huge fan of John Blanche, the visionary concept artist behind many of the iconic designs in the Warhammer universe. And one of my favorite pieces of John Blanche artwork is this piece that was used for the cover of the Battlefleet Gothic box set. It features an Emperor class battleship at the head of a fleet of ships translating out of the warp. And like many classic John Blanche pieces, it features a limited color palette called the Zorn palette, which uses only white, black, ochre, and red. Now, while many depictions of the warp have a riot of magentas and purples and every other color, this reddish warp has this kind of hellish, cool foreboding to it that I really like a lot. So I had this crazy idea to paint a backdrop of the warp, but I wanted it to have the same luminous quality that my pinprick starry sky has. So an idea came to me to use the plastic covering from an Ikea poster frame. By painting on the back of it, I should be able to make a transparent image that shines through when a light is placed behind it. It's worth a shot, at least. So I took the plastic out of the frame and I took it out to the garage and started spraying some paint on this thing. I tried to get that billowing, chaotic feel of a warp storm seething into real space, but at this point I had no idea if this was going to work or not. The image is on the other side of the plastic, so I won't know until I turn it around. Let's take a peek. Oh damn, this looks like it might work. Okay, let's add a bit more paint to manage the light bleeding through in weird places and bring this thing inside. I use the same compass technique on the back to stab the surface and make some stars. It doesn't go all the way through, but it should scratch the paint enough to make a starry impression. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see this thing in front of the softbox light. Yo, okay, this is awesome. This is awesome. The experiment was a total success. But you know what would make this even better? An Imperial spaceship in the middle ground. Now, I have a couple of these little sword class battleships from a while back, but they're pretty small and kind of underwhelming. You know, it'd be a lot cooler if I had that Emperor class battleship from the John Blanche painting, but the problem is that Battlefleet Gothic has been out of print for decades and those are really rare and expensive now. Well, thank God for eBay, because I got one right here. Now, my brother Kirk was kind enough to build it for me, and look at this thing. Damn, it's so encrusted with details. Aerodynamics is obviously not a huge concern in warp travel, but I love it because it's like a really cool, unique aesthetic to this world. This thing weighs a ton, and the plastic stand it comes with is notorious for snapping, so I'm going to put a nice thick brass rod in the bottom with some two-part epoxy adhesive. When that's dry, I prime the piece black, then spray white all over, leaving black in some of the deepest recesses. Now, I tried to mimic the scheme from the John Blanche painting, but the details are kind of different, so I basically just winged it. The color scheme, though, is basically gold, cream, and red. Well within that Zorn palette, but enough for your eye to move around the model and think it's interesting. I gave it a pretty quick paint job, though, because my plan is to light it with a harsh directional light, leaving deep shadows. This is a technique used in movies on miniature ships, and it really makes them look like they're out in space. So according to my research, the Emperor class battleship is somewhere around 8 kilometers or 5 miles long, which is absolutely insane. That's like from the southern tip of Manhattan at Battery Park all the way up to Central Park. You can imagine it floating over the skyline. That's like a two hour walk from one end to the other. The scale is absolutely mind blowing and that means that every one of the little bumps on the side of the ship is the size of a skyscraper. Damn. So for me to make a small segment of an Imperial style ship, this Battlefleet Gothic ship is really not going to be too much use in terms of a reference because what I'm building would be a mere pinprick on the side of one of these ships. But I can take some cues from the general design. There's a heavy texture with what looks like structural ribs or buttresses being a common feature. Now I reasoned that the spacing between the columns of the Into the Dark bulkheads would likely be a structural feature that's reflected on the outside as well. So with that in mind, I made a template for a gothic arch on some medium chipboard. Then using my hot wire cutter, I cut out a bank of large gothic windows. 
They are much taller than the plastic walls, but I think they need to be so you can see the space outside. Now using a bunch of other little foam bits, I built up some other ridges and details to give the impression of a chunky buttressed ribbing of the spaceship's exterior. Now for the landing pad inside the hangar-like area, I decided to use the landing pad from the new Killzone Morok kit. It's a really nice detailed bit of plastic and it'll fit the build nicely. Games Workshop was kind enough to send me a bunch of extra kits to help customize this table, so it's really cool to have all these extra bits and options. I always like the scene in Star Wars where the Millennium Falcon is dragged into the Death Star with the tractor beam. The hangar in that scene seems open to outer space, but it has some sort of force field that allows it to function as a barrier against open space. It allows the stars to be a backdrop for the scene, and it's a great visual. And I toyed with the idea of making a mechanical gate, but I decided it would be much better to go Star Wars style because it would block less of the view in and out of the table. So I built a big chunky looking opening, varying the style from the bank of windows to get a different but similar feel, and then I glued the two pieces together. And there you have the basic shape of my exterior spaceship wall. Now obviously the windows start fairly high off the ground. The reason for that is because I'm going to raise the playing surface of my kill team board up off the table to allow for some interesting features inside the hull. You'll see what I'm talking about later on in the build. I build up the bulk of the table with layers of 2 inch insulation foam cut with a hot wire cutter. It looks a bit like a giant beautiful cake. Now I take that cake outside to the garage and sand it down, then ice it with some delicious pink spackle. I really shouldn't record my voiceovers when I'm hungry, and you should never eat foam or spackle despite how delicious it looks. Anyways, when the spackle is dry, I sand it again then apply some black house paint. My ominous monolithic mega base is now ready. To paint the spaceship exterior, I start with a layer of gesso, brushing that marinade onto the ribs of the structure, and oh damn, I'm doing the th food thing again. Anyways, uh, gesso is a plaster that protects the foam and will fill some of the tiny gaps and pinpricks left from the construction. So I put on two coats, much like I do when I'm about to board an airplane and don't want to pay to check any luggage. Stippling with the brush leaves a nice pebbled and even finish and hides those brush strokes. So with that dry, I take that bad boy into the garage for some spray paint. I took some primer inspiration from a 1966 Rolling Stones song and decided to paint it black and with that dry, I applied some silver acrylic paint from a spray can. Now I'm not exactly sure what happened to all my spray cans, but a bunch of them have started spitting temperamentally recently. I don't get it. Anyways, with that steely exterior, I have a great basis for the exterior of the ship. Okay, let's put all these elements together and see what we're working with for the ship's exterior and backdrop. I set up the warp sky in front of one of my softbox lights, then place the Emperor class ship in front of that, then place the table and the exterior facade. Okay, let's hit the lights. Yo, <laughs> this is so cool. This is already one of the most immersive pieces I've ever made hands down, and this is just the beginning. Now you could easily set up the board out of the Kill Team box set on top of this riser and just enjoy the table as is, but we are going way further. I'm customizing the entire table. I can't wait to show you all the incredible stuff I've made for the interior in part 2. Make sure you're subscribed because you won't want to miss it. As always, a huge thank you to all my patrons for their support, and if you want to join my Patreon community, I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.